One, kidding. Two, open to being a sister wife yeah, with you. Yeah, I'm down for that. Well, okay. three, don't you guys have a working pack? Maybe he can be the sugar daddy. <laughs> Welcome to What the Fact. What the Fact. What the Fact. W-T-F-A-Q. That's like our call letters. <laughs> right? Like a radio yes. show. <laughs> hey, welcome to episode nine. <laughs> um, we are so glad you're here. We hope you've enjoyed episodes one through eight so far. We have. Um, and we want to share that love with you. So thank you for listening. And thank you for being here for episode nine. And if you heard some of the instruments right now, please <laughs> ask for more. We are... Uh... Up in our game with some plastic instruments that I bought off of Amazon. We're classically trained. Yeah. Yeah. In the art of Suzuki training. (laughs) Is that a motorcycle? No. Suzuki is the best company that makes motorcycles and pianos. We are not sponsored by them, but it's not like we wouldn't take it. No, it's um, it's piano style. When I was growing up learning how to play piano, you like graduate each book. And isn't it like violin as as well, right? I don't know. I don't know either. But you have to do... (laughs) You could, well, we're supposed to pot mitzvah you. I do need a bat mitzvah at some point. I just went through what would have been the like 20, 20 year anniversary of when I should have been bat mitzvahed. And you haven't. And I know I've never been bat mitzvahed. Do we get to like hold you in a chair and yeah. pass you around from person to person in a chair? From husband to husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, mean, something that's... along those lines. Yeah, I read from the Torah and it's all just a thing. Baruch and, but then I would. I. But my, my goal bat mitzvah would be as if it was when I should have had my bat mitzvah, which would have been 1998, which was the year of the greatest of music. And all Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys. So Mariah Carey still? Yeah, there's still Mariah oh, Carey, man. but I think that was her, like, her and, like, the end of her era. Not the end of her era. It was the beginning of her era with, like, more rappers, I think. Oof, yeah. What about Mambo Number no. 5? <laughs> I think that was a I need a little a bit of Ashley in, in my life. I'm a here. A little bit of Stephanie by my side. She's here. Was right there. <laughs> <laughs> they never yeah. mentioned Patricia in that song, and I'm so hurt. But no. do they mention they Rebecca? <laughs> I oh. hope so. They also did not mention Stephanie. <laughs> my alter ego, Rebecca. <laughs> anyway, welcome to episode 9. We are so happy you're here. Next week is our, what we've been looking forward to is going to be our Halloween episode, so we've got some good stories saved up, and we're so excited to share them with you. Boo. That's not booing at us, that is <laughs> Ashley's ghost. It's Ashley throwing her voice to me of her, of me booing her, <laughs> and it was rejected heavily. <laughs> Straight rejection. So we today we have some really good questions and i'm actually very excited for a lot of these questions but i'm so excited for next week too so make sure you you turn in next monday as well and uh make sure that you have some nice wine and the lights are out when you listen to that one and uh not for sexy time but for sexy oh, ghost or time please <laughs> sexy time yes. i mean if our voices can lead into that as well i don't want to know about that would you want to know about that yes i would 100 <laughs> percent. oh my god i definitely would not want to know if someone was doing that to my voice i was doing what to your voice i would don't look Leading at me like that. Sexy time, fuck yeah. you would so if yeah. a fan came up to you and was like stuff in there I love your voice and not. Like, yeah, if my <laughs> voice can get you there, fuck yeah. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. I would not want to know. I would, I would want to definitely know. try to make money off of that. Oh, I would run away. I'd be like silently running away. No. But I would be I would be the world's worst sex one operator because I would be like, Today for lunch I had a slice of pizza. But the crust was too dry. <laughs> like I would, you I could would keep going with that though. Yeah, like, well, what did you do to moisten it? Come on, you can keep going. <laughs> you could, but it would. I would just be the most bland sex phone operator. That That's, would be pretty funny if it was based it, off of food. True, but if you had a script, your voice itself would be fine we as a sex this. phone operator. Yeah, absolutely. What is the least sexy thing like you could talk about, but in a sexy voice? It'd probably have food to have poisoning. <laughs> Let's hear it. Oh, God. I, felt Do it. it. I felt it rumble in my stomach. <laughs> rumble, rumble. <laughs> the pain. Do you ever eased. have that feeling in your stomach where you're not sure if you need to go to the bathroom or not? 
<laughs> explosion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Toxic no. explosion. Toxic. <laughs> you just sing that Pepto Bismol theme song. <laughs> Toxic diarrhea. Yeah. Upset heartburn. stomach yeah, diarrhea. Yeah. Yes, that song. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, How did she know Sunday. that song. We all know it. <laughs> How do you not know that song? <laughs> so, Nausea, three questions heartburn, today. Indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. We all know this. No it's, one knows that. I, I, I do. definitely don't know that. know that. Also, it's kind of like the Big Mac, right? Two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. No. Correct. No. Yes. What? How do you not know this? I don't. I just. To, I, just... I guess when I was in choir in high school, we also <laughs> sang that. Do you sing that in choir? Patties, that is the sauce, most like cheese. Midwest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like in my we life. get our potatoes from the ground and then we butcher the meat ourselves. Just kidding, I made that up just now. Whoa. I so much respect that. <laughs> no, I don't know what to believe. Uh, no, I know. I know. What a, I'm leading you guys on. All right, let's get into our questions because right. we have some really good questions tonight. And Ashley's gonna start us off with question one. Question the first. Question, question one. the first. This is a great question. <laughs> Riddle I'm so me excited. these questions three. Well, you know, this question can go multiple ways. I feel like Stephanie has heard me ask this question before. So oftentimes when new people start on our team, they're always like, say a fun fact about yourself. And it's like boring. People are like, <laughs> some of the best answers I've heard when we were working at a uh, insurance company at one point I remember the CEO is a pretty small company that was acquired by a behemoth and new people would come up and say what their favorite thing to do was. And it was really awkward or like a fun fact. One person was like, I like shopping. (laughs) I like napping. There's somebody who filled out a form at our current job and one of their like favorite hobbies was napping. Mad mad respect to them though. (laughs) So, you know, I feel like it's a very generic question to ask like, Tell, me, tell us a fun fact. So I like to ask, what is your favorite smell? Oh, is a good question. It ask. says a lot about yes. the person. And we asked much... it while you were out. <gasps> How could you? Who, what did they say? <laughs> he couldn't come up with an answer. He already. didn't want to think about it. <gasps> Who doesn't That have says a lot to me, smell? actually, then, already. So somebody else said, be careful of what you say. I'll follow you for your rest <laughs> of your time here. <laughs> but you know what? Syrup. Not... <laughs> You know who you are. You know. Who you you know. Are. But you know what? He did, by that's this person not having an answer says a lot to me. Just be yourself. Be weird. <laughs> be weird. Make it weird. But listen though, smell is like one of the most responsive senses that we have, right? So yeah, it absolutely. Brings back it memories. Is, it yeah, it, it, that's the closest yeah. sense you have that associates to any form of memory. Correct. Well, yeah. and it influences a huge part of taste. So, like, taste is not purely just, like, through your tongue. It's, like, a lot of it is through smell. Yeah. So. And I can be in a good mood and smell something bad and be in a bad mood. That's all. So, (laughs) Stephanie, what's what's your favorite smell? My favorite smell. So, I have two favorite smells. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) One is the very obvious. Sadly, it's not going to be the final answer, but it's a very obvious smell of fresh cut grass. There's something oh. very special about that. It does smell hmm. delicious. Why? What does that remind you of? It's just, I don't, it reminds me of getting up early to go to school, walking through the park in the middle of my neighborhood to go to the bus that had just been freshly cut. And it was like, oh, it's a new day. And like, things aren't so bad yet. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Everything's all right. It's a precursor. <laughs> a precursor. Things were okay. in the suburban neighborhood with the grass freshly cut and... You know, the guard gates that make sure everything was okay. That's great, though. But my actual favorite smell now. Yes. So, if I haven't made this clear yet, I have a dachshund. Uh-huh. Dachshund, fun fact. A lot of people don't know this unless you have a dachshund. Emit a very interesting smell when they sleep. What? Yeah, when they sleep and they wake up, they smell like corn chips. Like what? Fritos. No. I never and thought of this though. It's the most delicious, incredible <laughs> smell you've ever smelled. You just like sniff them all over and they're like, you bitch, why'd you wake me up? And you're just like, I just want to smell your neck. And you're just so happy. And it's oh, it's so incredible. I want to smell Briggs now. You can. Wait, Whenever is this... he is sleeping, just wake him up and you just smell like near his neck or anywhere on him really. And their feet especially, and right? It's not. No, no. I think it's more like around his like neck and tummy. 
Weird. Oh. He smells like corn. It, it's true. I've been and it's, yeah. yes. it's a dachshund thing. All of my dachshunds growing up, all of them smelled like corn chips. Weird. Yeah. It's the best thing in the world. And my roommate, who didn't know this was real, and I was like, wait for it. It'll happen. And you won't. You're going to come to me and be like, I can't believe this is a legitimate thing. And it happened. And she was like, why does he smell like nacho cheese Doritos? And I'm like, isn't it the best thing you've ever smelled in your life? <laughs> nacho cheese Doritos is very different than corn chips. Not this, So it's like a, a range of nacho cheese Doritos and Fritos. So it's just on the corn I chip think Fritos. realm. I see Fritos. In the same it's family. definitely Fritos. I think it just depends on some of the dachshunds. But yeah. it's a range between Fritos and nacho cheese Doritos. Break <laughs> smells like Fritos. You're correct. It's Do you, have you ever so looked into the science cool. behind this? I feel like I should, and none of us have. We just enjoy it so much that we just don't want to ruin it with what oh. it could be. <laughs> it's we're like just it's so the anal gland secretion. We're just, oh, no. It's definitely oh not God. because we all know what that, anybody who has a dog knows yep. what that smells like. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, when they got the, when they got, when they need their butt squeezed. No. Do you not know about this? I've so, owned dogs, dogs and squeezed. we never had to squeeze their butt. Well, if they got groomed or if they like some, if it's normal and they go like the bathroom, go to the bathroom normally, it'll just happen on its own. But if mm-hmm. it doesn't, sometimes it can get impacted and then you have to get it done by a groomer. It's or like a popping butt. a pimple. Like, but it's yeah. Wait, but what up. does that mean though? So it, there's like glands that kind of get Stuck? impacted. Oh. <laughs> and it's it can gross. get infected if it doesn't release naturally. We'll YouTube it later so you can see. I don't um, but know. basically, that does not smell like Fritos. It smells like fish. But it's speaking not- of <laughs> speaking of anal glands, though, you know, like the castorium, right? Is like the anal glands clean, like stuff from beavers, right? Castorium oh, yeah, is yeah, also yeah. A, a. They put it in perfumes. They put it. Mm-hmm. It's a a natural natural quote um, raspberry flavoring. Wait, 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 wait. Back up. Mm-hmm. I don't know what castorium is. Castorium is what is excreted from beaver's anal glands. And it's this like is like you don't know that the shells of beetles aren't used for like candy coating. Oh, you don't know that either. I didn't know that. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay. To be honest, that wouldn't prevent me from that because you know I Doesn't eat everything. Prevent anybody. But That's true. what? So, also fun fact about castorium. I think it's like one of the only natural earth element not elements but you know what i mean like uh things that has been found in space as well oh castorium which is also excreted at beavers are you saying that wind. beavers are ufos no but they, <laughs> if you ask like a uh an astronaut what space tastes like sometimes they'll say raspberry which is what it's used for natural flavoring castorium so but they all, found castorium in space all i learned here is that beavers were the original scientologists is that the main <laughs> takeaway is oh. am i did I just discover? Did I just put it together? Am I a scientist? Um, watch out. If the, there's a knock at the door, don't answer it. <laughs> it's just a beaver, answer. like men in black style. It's, it's like a Tom beaver Cruise. in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, squeeze my anus. <laughs> <laughs> Anal glands, not just your anus. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Specific glands. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just come squeeze half his My anus. favorite thing that you just said right now is while we're on the note of an- anal glands, <laughs> which never happens. No, not a normal topic. <laughs> not enough times, anyway. Anyways, so <laughs> backtrack. <good>. Backtracking. <laughs> The smell of dachshunds when they wake up <laughs> is my favorite smell. And they fresh smell cut like grass. corn chips. Yes. Oh. And fresh cut grass is just like a, I don't know, it's, it's not even a nostalgia thing. It's like a nostalgia for a show you watched about nostalgia. True. <laughs> but, but it's never a about people... a, something you've actually experienced. It's like, oh yeah, that reminds me of when I watched Now and Then and how great of a movie mm. was that? And like, mm-hmm. that's what happens when it comes to fresh cut grass. Oh, fresh cut grass and anal, beaver, beaver anal glands. That's hard oh, to say. No. Anyway. That's the warm up now. Warm up. Uh, beaver anal glands. Beaver anal glands. Beaver it's anal. hard. Oh, that's really You're hard. so good, though. You should try it, Steph. No, thanks. <laughs> Everyone at home, try it. Give it a try. <laughs> Don't make me. <laughs> Don't make me do it. So those are good ones, though. I have two as well. Oh. Because one is... One that I don't recommend smelling, and then one is <laughs> the one that I. Oh God, oh God. I, it's, it's pretty common. So the safe one I'll give you now is Yankee Candles makes their strawberry candle. I could like breathe that in every minute of every day. I love it, mm-hmm. but they don't often have it in their stores. You have to like special order. It's expensive. I think I might be one of the only people in the world who just loves that scent because they get rid of it frequently. However. 
Is your closet full of all of the Yankee candles that, that they closet? have <laughs> next to your 60 no, million but, clocks? No, but in the kitchen, there is one of those. <laughs> really? There is one I of those have to candles smell it. in the kitchen. I love it. I can't help it. So the one that I'm a little bit more embarrassed about, but one that I, I don't know if it's nostalgia and it's not farts. Don't worry. <laughs> Stephanie's Everyone waiting. loves their own brand. <laughs> mm, the must be. Oh, it's like a family guy or Simpsons. I don't want one of those. <laughs> um, but... When I was a kid and we would go get like gas in our car, I really love the smell of the gas. Like, oh, gasoline oh. smells amazing. Yes. Why? But I would like Why sniff does it, smell it so good? and like sniff know. the air and breathe it in. And I would offer, and, like, as soon as I was old enough to fill the car with gas for my family, I would offer to do it just so I could be out there and absorb more of it into my head. <laughs> I do wonder if there is some sort of like chemical component to it that does make it smell good because yep. yeah. you know how there are certain things that biologically are done in such a way that yep. you don't like alter it like yeah babies are so cute so you don't kill them because they suck <laughs> like same thing with like <laughs> kittens and puppies like they're the worst but they're so cute that you just deal with it yeah i wonder if gasoline is some sort of similar chemical component where it smells so good that like you you need it or if you smell it it's not necessarily a sometimes it's a deterrent in a household but Oddly enough, in a gas station, it just, just smells, smells so good. good. Yeah. So yeah. I also grew up next to an ethanol plant. Oh. So it's like, you know, when they make corn into gasoline, basically. And it smelled like a bakery. It smelled like a fucking bakery. And it smelled so good every day. Wait. It was wonderful. We heard it too, folks. Oh. We heard it too. Bakery. This so. Justin. This Justin. <laughs> you heard it too. I, I got did. very excited. You cursed. She so cursed. When, so someday you guys are going to come and visit my hometown with me in yes. Hastings, Nebraska. And we will make sure to smell the What ethanol. you think is a bakery is actually straight gas. <laughs> <laughs> Don't light a match. <laughs> <laughs> but it smells so good. Anyway, so oh, my man. two favorite things are Yankee candles, strawberry scents, and gasoline well you know i keep on thinking about all the scents that you guys are talking about and trying to relate my experiences so like the fresh cut cut grass i played soccer for a really yes, long time absolutely so the smell of grass like that reminds me of like you know saturday mornings where the fog um there was like light dew on the grass and like <sighs> that's what it reminds me of um and it's it's sort of fun to be like oh this is like your memory but this is my memory associated right that's I like all that. that memory is it's implanted by scientologists be- beaver scientologists we've talked <laughs> about be- this from beaver scientologists to enjoy fresh cut grass <laughs> and create these memories they exist in oh, space man. Um, okay. For my favorite smells, I have, I have two, one of them sort of like plain, but, uh, one of my favorite smells is like the downy, downy smell, like oh, the downy sure. soft. Smell. I have some mac- wax melting stuff in my kitchen of the downy stuff. We can play with it later. Wait, what? Wax melting stuff? You know, those like the, those things where you like melt the wax and it's supposed to make your apartment smell or your place smell good. You mean a candle? No, not a candle. <laughs> like the, the wax melting things. You just melt the wax and it's fragrant. Oh, I've never seen that before. Okay, well, I will introduce it to you. <laughs> and I've got the downy scent in there. Oh, yeah, I love and that downy scent. we can rub it scent. in our faces later. Yes. No, it reminds me of, as a kid, I used to love, um, I used to love fresh laundry coming out of the dryer and i would like hide in it with my like my mom was trying to fold in it and i was like yay warm the laundry i wasn't hiding in the dryer <laughs> she'd pour the warm laundry on the bed and it smells so good and the warmth of it felt so nice and yes. the smell of it anyway so that's probably one smell and then i probably have another very dachshund trait by the way is to sit itself in laundry with its corn chip scent <laughs> literally you take clothes out the dryer and any dachshund who just woke up is just gonna like dive into that pile of freshly dried laundry so are you saying that you're gonna smell like corn chips because i hope so and incredible <laughs> laundry all of it combined to the best thing you've ever smelled in your life i think that's the new scent that you need to um invent as a perfume it all has to do with food i love baking bread in my apartment can actually ingest it and not kill my innards <laughs> after you butcher a pig you bake some bread yeah. butchering is more of a 7 a.m thing you know get that done you wake up you smell that grass and then you butcher a pig i just bolt that pig oh, yes. too much too much no um and then the <laughs> other favorite smell is my mom's cooking so like my mom makes this freaking amazing roast pork reba 
Reba. We we changed her name for anonymity. <laughs> we refer to Ashley's mom as Reba. My mom is not a country singer. <laughs> but she, she is in my Bobby. heart. <laughs> you just see my mom at the wedding and you're like, Reba, give me a hug. Reba. Meanwhile, she's like, I hate that guy. <laughs> she was so guy. sweet though because Ashley on their way here, her parents dropped her off at my place, which is so sweet. Mm-hmm. If my parents were here, I'd, I'd hope they did that too. However, Reba brought or made Ashley bring some dessert with her and it was so good yeah Reba so thank good you at- Reba I really hope we get to the stage one day where not only is Reba invited to all things but I really want Mel K invited <gasps> to all things yes. oh, because he's really great at most events because you'll just like see him kind of chuckle but mostly just kind of put his head to his hand and just <laughs> and just kind of shake like I mentioned this in the last episode it's just kind of a uh, you just kind of shake it off, like, okay, th- this happened. I'm not. I can't control it, yeah. but I'm gonna let this hilarity happen. And it explains God so much about me. you. I'm pretty sure. So my mom has been. I was telling uh, the ladies, my mom has been wanting to listen to the podcast, but she does not like profanity <laughs> hey, or Reba. like. Sorry, <laughs> Reba. <laughs> and she doesn't like testy topics, like you know, sex. Anal glands. She's okay with that, actually. Did I tell you about that? About the proper response to a dick pic? No. Did, no, yes, I did. Last you week. Did, yes. I did. Yeah. I did last week. Oh, no. Um, but anyways, uh, no, I, I just, I don't think my mom would like the profanity. I think she'd be like, beaver anal glands. Ew. <laughs> I think that's a lot for her. My dad would just be, would skip all of that and be like, yes, dachshunds smelled the best. <laughs> Having cool. had 10 or so in his life. <laughs> Anywho, Reba, thank, Reba, thanks thank for you, the pre snacks. Snacks, thanks, Reba. Now, oh, tonight, that the lights went down in Georgia. I don't do country music. Oh, I used to add a phase. So did I. Yeah, what? when I was in Hawaii. When I lived in Hawaii, you basically you you went full kind of Hawaiian music, which is just wonderful, and I recommend everybody, especially on Fridays, because the Aloha Friday is a very big thing. Or you went country. I went country a little bit because my brother and the a lot a, the majority of the people I hung out with were in the military. Mm. So you kind of get a lot of country in there. Got you. Um, which isn't the worst thing. I went to like a Randy Jackson concert and Oof. I don't know who that is. Okay. Yeah, I don't know most country. <laughs> Next <anymore>. question. <laughs> when I go when I go home to visit my family in Nebraska, there's a lot of country stations there. Oh, it sure is. Oh yeah. I'm a big fan though. Like, okay, we're not going sponsorships here, but if you can b- combine Hawaii and military, you get Zach Brown Band. <gasps> oh. Toes. The song toes, toes or Chicken Fried. I only know Toes, but Toes is one of Listen my favorite songs. It's, it's on the same wavelength okay. of like it's a Jimmy Buffett esque. Okay, 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 okay. It's like countryish version of Jimmy okay. Buffett. I mean, okay, I just didn't grow up listening to country. Like my parents listened to Motown, then I grew into huh, Motown. Sookie, sookie. And, <laughs> yeah, y'all know, <laughs> y'all know. <laughs> um, and I mean, I've been to a country line dancing bar once in L.A. I still can't line dance. It was so fun. People got real serious. We learned how to line dance at 4-H camp when I was growing up, which is a whole sentence within itself. (laughs) Yeah, let's unpack that. We should unpack that. (laughs) That was where I had my first kiss at 4-H camp. Tell us about that. how old were you? I was pretty young. I think I was like nine. (gasps) And we're at Crystal Lake. Oh, my gosh. Crystal Lake is definitely the lake in Friday the 13th. Yes, but also it's a lake in Nebraska. (laughs) So some mass killer didn't. No, Go on a I, I, I think I'm still alive. <laughs> well, that means you were the virgin. You're not. That's all that means. <laughs> You're in purgatory with us. Oh, shit. I love it though. I'm I'm happy God here. Damn it. No, but there's this kid, and he was like the 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 cool kid, and I was really shy and quiet, so I kind of hung up in the back. But then we if we had these like these kind of cabins that were up on stilts, and they're like I don't know, maybe like 20 stairs up to these cabins. And the first night we were there, there's a knock on our door, and the boys weren't allowed in the girls' cabin. But one of the other girls came and knocked on her door and she goes, Cody wants to see if Patricia can give him a kiss. Oh, and I was man. so embarrassed oh my as a gosh. nine-year-old. And I was so shy. But eventually I let him, you know, experience this. Cody, you- if you're out there. <laughs> we're still finding for you where are you like, cody where I'm not are you you, you, never <laughs> you never called you never called how do you been years where have you been <laughs> cody i've been waiting for you <laughs> <laughs> wait steph when was your first kiss 
Uh, first peck or first kiss? What? I mean, one is a peck, one has tongue. Oh, oh no, so Cody was my first peck. Let's get this. Okay, first right. peck. So mine first wasn't peck. that. Mine wasn't that bad. My first peck was um fourteen. I actually was a late bloomer in this stage. <laughs> if you're a late bloomer, I mean, Ashley's like, I'm and still waiting for mine. <laughs> my first kiss, kiss, kiss was uh sixteen. Oh, my first kiss, kiss was later than that. Oh yeah, mine was. When was yours? My first kiss, kiss. Man, I was in college when I had my first like makeout sesh. <laughs> Shin, sorry, I know you don't like. I don't. I don't like the short words. One of my first <laughs> makeout session was in college. That's all, mm. and it's with a guy named Cody from Oklahoma. <gasps> Wait, are Cody's. you? Sh- are you sure it wasn't the same Cody? Was it the same Cody all along? No, because it was my. I don't know if I want to share this story. My friend, her ex-boyfriend was visiting and he brought a guy with him named Cody. And we just, you know, hit it off. <laughs> the end. Ashley, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I, I have nothing happily, else. <laughs> I will happily <laughs> talk about mine. Okay, I have zero shame it. with that. My first pack was a guy named Soren, who Soren. turned out Ooh. to be actually the voice of Stuart. Or no, he wasn't the voice. He was in Stuart Little. <gasps> Fun fact. What a celebrity. Oh, <laughs> I have a kind of a love, dick. too, we can talk about. But then after that, the first real kiss, his name was Evan. It was not romantic, though. It was as a friend where he's like, weird that this hasn't been a thing, but he was actually like, had just broken up with a good friend of mine. Mm. And that was the only time I'd ever kind of had anything with a good friend of mine's Mm. ex. And like, I haven't, I still haven't recovered Mm -hmm. (laughs) to this day. Man, Um, those are deep. Yeah. No, so it wasn't like super like romantic. It was just like a, hey, let's get this out of the way for you. (laughs) I taught this guy named Billy. How to make out. <gasps> Which I did that so awkward. Oh my god. So let me tell you this real quick. <laughs> there was there's this guy named Billy and he didn't know he never kissed a girl. And so his friend was like, Hey Patricia, um w- will you teach Billy how to kiss? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> so Billy and I made out on this couch while John sat behind us. It was so oh, awkward. Wait, he's how just like old? taking notes. We were in college. Okay. I mean it was so awkward. He I hope he's not listening to this, but he definitely like he might. I hope he is. It was awkward. He might. He well, might. My be first listening. boyfriend hey, never actually listens to this yet. <laughs> he lives in San Francisco now. Oh, fair, 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 fair. I don't he know how, we got, how we got from here to uh, wait, tell That's us about like yours, nice. Ashley. Oh, I feel so uncomfortable. It's okay. I just told you guys. You don't have to share things. anything no, you don't want to share. I mean, share. Steph, I love how you're like, I'm a late bloomer. I was 16. <laughs> I'm like, For I the think... first kiss, and then there were then years later. <laughs> I think I was 20. That's I think okay. I was 20 for my first kiss. Pack or kiss Peck, or both. Both, or both of them. That's, That's okay. Because you knew what you wanted. I was I just trashy that. from the beginning. <laughs> not true. Not true. No, no, you true. know, I think I was just, like, you know, not raised in a very physical like a, a family that was physical with one another. Actually, when I was in fifth grade, I went to an all girls school and we had to do a play where it's like, you know, the girls would also play the boy parts too. And then they had to hug at the end. And I still remember my friends were like chasing me being like, give us hugs. And I'm like, I don't want to give hugs to anyone. <laughs> don't That's touch me. me. Now. <laughs> I know. Every How time- the tides have turned. <laughs> every time you see me, Steph, you just run away. <laughs> um so yeah no i uh my my first kiss was in college with my also my first boyfriend oh yeah um that was uncomfortable he tried to kiss me a few times and i was like i'm not ready for this i'm not ready and he was like i am (laughs) i i dated a guy we never kissed we only dated for like a week but he tried kiss me so many times that i ducked out of that like so many times yes but he was like you know what I brought you popcorn because I know it's your favorite food, but wasn't oh in college. <gasps> He's like, I made you coffee. And I was like, so? And you get nothing in return because I mean, it's what you fucking deserve. I know. Yeah. That's how you get into like a small Christian college, I, though. I can't Ugh. believe he tried to pressure you through the foods of popcorn <laughs> and saying, oh, yeah, I deserve a kiss because I brought you popcorn. I but the popcorn. It wasn't... <laughs> was the popcorn? But the popcorn. Was it hurricane popcorn? Because if so, game changer. What's hurricane? Is that with like a chocolate on it? No, hurricane popcorn is popcorn with mochi, um, like uh, Japanese crackers and oh. seaweed on popcorn. I've had that. It's amazing. It's yeah. Yes. Yes. No, I, I agree. I've, 
I just need to uh, be careful and not talk about how many times I made out with guys on this podcast <laughs> because my family could be listening someday. You know what, though? What Something we haven't talked about. We talked about an early, like, worst date, but we should talk about best dates. Oh, I have I we a should great have some. date. Or, like, nice things that people have done. I, yeah, so I have a date that was, like, we can talk about this later because I want to save this for another podcast, yeah. but... I've got one that I, I, I loved it. I still, to this day, Aww. I'm like, this is what I hope that someone, if I ever have a daughter or someone does with my daughter someday. Aww. It was really sweet, romantic. You know, like, I sometimes I think about that um, with some guys or, you know, people's partners, whatever. Like, how do they think about doing these dates? Or where what yeah. is the best date that you've planned? Because mm-hmm. I love planning surprises. Yeah. So. Me too. I just need to find a guy to... uh get this going with <laughs> i remember i dated this guy and it was valentine's day and i thought about everything i was like i knew his favorite food i knew his favorite beer i obviously am no longer dating him and <laughs> i i planned out this like whole agenda and um he got me earrings from the uh from his his birthday month what yeah he's and- like wear my gemstones on your ears yeah and I was like, wow, Dick. this is, and it was super not thoughtful. It yeah. was like all about him versus being like, I am giving to this other person. But what makes a good relationship though, is when you both give and receive bo- the same amounts. Agreed. Like both people or need to be Or if you actually givers. both do the love languages and understand them well enough to know yeah. what each other. But it's still, you're giving and receiving for yeah. both of those, right? Yeah. 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 And so I think that's, that's really sweet. Yeah. Anyways, we should move on to our next question. Yeah, wow, we spent we, a lot of time we, with smells. I think we had like four questions in this one, so. <laughs> what was my smell again? I was uh, kidding. Yours was fresh cut grass. And my dog sleeping. And your dog's corn chip smells. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> and Patricia's was beaver anal glands. No! <laughs> <laughs> That's your brand. <laughs> no, Castorium it's is all the name for now. No, I prefer no. The, la- the former. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, mine... <laughs> Mine isn't that long of a question anyway, so it's good. But what takes a lot of time, but is totally worth the extra amount of time? I can't answer this without seeming like a total dweeb. Say then it. to say it. Cleaning. Yes. That's true. But cleaning well. What I love a clean apartment Me so too. so much to the point where I actually pay someone else to do it <laughs> <laughs> which is me a too. very gotta say this once in every episode a very Jewish thing of me to do <laughs> I say it at least once we need to have like a, a ding whenever a, you a talk Italian. about being Jew. true or oh my ones. god I, like whatever the song when they're up in the chairs they're like duh, duh, duh. I don't know what it is that's like that's, that's a clown the theme song. It's a different song <laughs> close what? enough <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Hava Nagila. The Hava Nagila song, yeah. Yes. Oh, I was, I was going to go in the bat mitzvah, like, Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu. How do you know this? Because my whole childhood was defined by bat mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs that I went to. I, I mean, in San Francisco, I was friends a with Jews here. a lot of Jewish people. Frisco Are Kid. They? I mentioned this in many episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frisco Kid is San Francisco. Oh, it is. Yeah. I've never seen it. <laughs> We it's have wonderful. definitely a movie night coming up where we're going to watch like 20 movies. <laughs> Stephanie's satisfied I, with our knowledge. I got to make y'all watch Frisco Kid if you haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So the amount of time I was like, what was the original question? <laughs> oh, yes. I come to the conclusion of cleaning. That might be the best answer that I've but, ever thought of. Well, because I'm also kind of a dick. And like, so I have my roommate. She is my closest friend of all time. She's yeah. a sister to me. I love her so much. But she is a hurricane <laughs> she literally will like come home in her hurricane form everything is just all of a sudden like broken or sprawled out oh. and you didn't even know she was like you never actually saw her you just saw like a wisp of something that yep. came by you and just everything is in turmoil and then you just won't see her again for a couple of days oh, we always man. joke that it was and this uh this might be mildly insensitive so she is persian mm-hmm. and so we refer to her as the persian tornado oh, oh my god <laughs> but that's like that that was her nickname and it was very loving and endearing but also like kind of accurate she would just like show up and just like tornado it up things would just like be in complete disarray and then she'd leave and then we'd literally sweep as she left oh my wow (laughs) it was a whole thing and i'm still dealing with that now because she's my roommate you know 15 years later she is she is my sister and i will deal with this till the end of time you've known her for 15 years yeah we we uh yeah i've known her since freshman year of college oh Oh, that's sweet yeah and she's still my my closest friend and sister to this day but so cleaning is one of those things where it's like 
we have a house cleaner and it's my choice because I don't want to deal with the tornado yeah. because at the end of the day, I'm still a petty bitch. And like, if you make a mess, <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to. And so I get annoyed with that. So like, if you make a mess, if you have friends over and they make a mess, I don't want to clean that shit. But at the same time, I have to clean it because as somebody who was raised in such a way, your house should always be guest ready. That's true. Should mm, always be true. guest ready. I wish mine would have been growing up. We, I grew up in a house with um, kind of hoarders. And so it was definitely never guest ready. And whenever we had guests coming over, it was my job to clean up the mess that was not just mine. And I, to this day now, because of that, I'm relatively clean. At any given time, I'm ready for someone to come over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very important. Extremely important. Yes. I like to say that, but I live in boxes right now, mostly because we just moved into a new place. So. That's a very different situation. <laughs> no, I want to get back to the point where we're like that, but right now, I don't. I just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's why, like, so we recorded a couple episodes at my house, like, a week or so ago, and I was, like, visibly frantic because I did not have enough time to clean up before. Everybody oh, came was like that. Yeah. <laughs> that was me making sure it was okay enough. Oh my gosh. Before it was coming over. But it's it's just a weird thing where I think it's I don't know, it's such a weird thing that like things have to look a certain way. So it almost and I'm sure I can go way back into the psychology of this, but there needs to be an appearance of I have it together. Yes. You do have it together. That's very important. It's just it's all an act. <laughs> <laughs> I it's all an act. Meanwhile, like all of your walls are just like LED displays, and we're not even in a home. <laughs> oh, we're in a holy cell. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god! Could you? Oh, that's a really good movie. So, oh, that's one a of really the most like satisfying things I've ever seen on the internet, though, is like you know those walls of LED little panels. Is somebody plugging in one of those panels to a wall that's already lit up, and it just kind of naturally falls in there? Have you seen that before? No. I think so. We'll Google it later. Google it, everybody listening. It's it's so satisfying. Google oh my gosh. Google. I'm just envisioning like this show where we're watching Stephanie in this LED home, but it's the reality show of you not knowing that you live in this home and people are just watching you like a Coliseum. Like Truman situation. Show. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we can't go back to the Truman Show because I've brought this up before how it's everybody's either forefront or somewhat like in the back fear of everybody's in the Truman Show. I have mentioned this before. Mm. And yes. it is a valid fear. And we talked about that because I told you how there is a paper that I wrote in college about yes. people who think that when they leave a room, th- the yeah. world stops in that room so and it only crazy. continues wherever they are. I don't think the world stops. I think they continue only talking about me. <laughs> we do actually just talk about you when, when you leave. That's it. We have nothing else going on in our lives. Just Stephanie. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ashley? What do you think is worth the extra time you put in? You know that I like doing a lot of weird activities. So yes, we do. And I, don't, and I don't think everyone understands. Like, why would you do this? Just go to a store and fucking buy cheese. But I make cheese, and I've been experimenting in um, in the cheeses with the soft rinds. The the uh, you know like like a brie is a yeah. soft rind yes. that you can eat. Um, and that's really, really fun and very time consuming. But I think a lot of people are like, why would you do that? I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's the science of it. That's pretty fun and experimentation. Yeah. Um, like and baking. yeah, like baking or even like doing sculpture. Yes. Um, so like a lot of my sculptural pieces will take months to make and people are like, why do you spend so much time doing the carvings or doing these like little balls that you like then attach onto your pieces and it takes forever but it's like very cathartic and i'm not even sure if the output's better but it's like the process of making art i get it i truly get it yeah i think that's really cool though yeah mine was really dumb (laughs) now now we gotta dissect it to (laughs) the nth degree let's do this i was gonna say should we guess first before she says (sighs) yeah i guess it what is what do i think is you think it's a bad answer and you don't think it's interesting I think it's kind of interesting. Oh, you it's think it's kind answer. of interesting? It's bad answer compared to what you guys Is have. Is it having to do with video games? No, but that's actually, it's, that's true as well. I feel Are like... you saying I know you better than you know yourself? <laughs> Quite possibly. She's a beaver Scientologist. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Give me. I can't remember its cans. name. I keep wanting to say the joke of like Xenon. It's not Xenon. It's Xenu? Xenu. Xenu, right? The, yeah, whomever they all 
worship. Yeah. The Scientologist, like, oh. god of the mall. It's like, and he's a beaver now. in disguise. He's a beaver. <laughs> he's clearly a beaver. He's like, squeeze these glands. He might have been a beaver or Tom Cruise in South Park. Wasn't it something ridiculous like that? I don't think he was a beaver. He was something weird. I haven't seen what that episode in so long. <laughs> Anyways, I might go something. All right, so I know you just said no to video games, but I'm going to say it still <laughs> has to be. Something along the lines of so video games. So you're correct in that since it's not video games. But when I used to build like Minecraft things for money back in the day, I used to make sure people who helped me build, I'd be like, listen, even if people are not going to see the foundation of this building because it's in Minecraft, you don't need to, I would still make them build the foundation. I would make them do the things underneath stuff because like, if you're going to do something, do it right. Do it well. Mm-hmm. But that's not my answer, but I like Even if it's answer. virtual? I, yeah. I, okay. well, we've hung out enough. My guess is showering. Yours is Ooh. close. That does seem close because you do have the best hair. And I've been oh, in your bathroom and the, the amount of products. Yes. The hair. And my God. So I, this is not an endorsement, but I do subscribe to FabFitFun. And they give me so many products that I can't go through them all quickly enough. So I have tons of good products. Her, her bathroom looks like an Instagrammable bathroom. It's like all yeah. these beautiful products. It's products that have not been opened but yet. But with like, <laughs> not, not to not to completely destroy that, but with like a uh, like a elementary school toilet where it's like yes. a fun, full, <laughs> a I have the worst situation. toilet. It, it's called Vintage. Is okay. that called Vintage? Get on board. <laughs> it's like one of the, the flushers that it's you can literally step on when you're in a... Uh, you're in a public yeah. restroom it's a tankless toilet so like it's there's... awesome no it sucks well also, so it, it sucks in the sense that it's so my only problem with the tankless toilet is when you live in a city where there's prone to disasters like you kind of want that <gasps> tank of just in case you of need water. it water yeah that's the problem also you can't attach a bidet to it is another problem oh shit yeah can you talk about that voice that you just used because i don't know I, what I feel like that I was use that at least once every episode <laughs> you sounded like a grandfather that i wanted you to tell me more my stories. own jewish grandfather that i have summoned when she says summoned she's also Jewish like demon. making something come out of her boobs <laughs> well, I well, they come out of my boobs no it just comes out of my, my voice i don't know what it is i can't repeat Grandpa i also said Stephanie. i can't do the same thing twice same. <laughs> what so, was it so it's wiping <laughs> when you're like done your with ass? The i am so concerned I right like now like your ass do you not yeah. wipe enough no, I'm or just do you saying, wipe too much? Because that's also not okay. Listen, True. you guys have better answers. I told you already than what I have. <laughs> but my answer to this was going to be: it's better to like take the time and wipe it well than like leave a little bit there. But that's if you all. wipe like too much, that's also an issue. Like you don't want to leave anything, but you also don't want to like hurt yourself or you're, you're have correct. an indication you're of correct. a problem. I don't want you to spend an hour just like <laughs> digging away at it. But I'm well, not digging <laughs> away, but like, God, I feel like, oh, this is a terrible I example. Like but I feel answer- like there's a Tosh.0 literal like question at the end where he says, oh, if you wait more than five times, you're 40% more likely to have anal cancer. <gasps> like, and I don't, I don't think he's wrong. Like, I think it was an actual <laughs> stat that nobody really paid attention to. But also this comes from somebody where my grandfather had colon cancer. So shit like that is not shit like funny. That. So, Pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> so nice we learned that Stephanie also just never wipes. She's like, nature oh, is nature. No, Stephanie I just shakes it off. Do. <laughs> shakes I it do, off. but I get scared when you say shit like that. Okay, but I also like your answer, Ashley, about showering. Because when there was like a whole thing on Twitter about like a month or two ago about people who don't wash their beneath their, their legs. like legs. Yes. Yeah, like they think that just the rundown of water is enough to wash our legs. I have to admit though, like when I was about thirteen or fourteen, I came to that realization on my own. I was like, you know, what? I'm not really washing my legs, but I got more into it. I've gotten lazier over time. Oh well, <laughs> when I was you younger, do? I used to like literally sit with my head back into the the. The tub, I had, like, all the olive oil in my hair, what? and I did, like, nair on the legs. Like, I went, I was crazy in high school. I like, I'm going to get were... someone. I got to be ready. <laughs> Seriously, looks were all that mattered to me. And now that I've gotten older, I'm like, I'll, I'll like, clean everything. But, like, I'm in and out of the shower in 10 minutes because nothing, who fucking cares anymore? <laughs> fair, fair. You know what I look like? <laughs> like, I don't care anymore. I got those uh, exfoliating gloves that you wear in the shower. They've made what? a huge difference. Wait, what is this? So they're just like, instead of using like a little loofah, you wear these little gloves that are like a little bit rough, like soft sandpaper. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> but you just put like some shower gel on them and you use that to clean yourself. And I have 
I feel so much more clean coming out of the shower now. So I have one of those, but you actually put in the bar of soap in it. Oh. That's that's my that's my shit. Okay. That's literally all I use all the time. And it's the best thing in the world. So you both need to send me links to that because I have Yeah, it's on my Amazon that. list of I'll like buy and, for buy and buy and buy again. That'll be my gift, you guys. Aww. It literally Clean yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Clean yourself. Clean yourself. I know your legs are nice and dirty. Clean you yourself. Know, I will literally look it up right now. It's it's my favorite thing in the world. You literally put your bar of soap in it and it lasts oh. for so long. And you use that, and it's the loofah with the soap inside. All I have once. a loofah with the whole soap the as well. But I think, yeah, I've got that. I like that. I experiment a lot oh, with these kind of things. Love it. My exfoliating gloves are my fave. Yeah. Anyway, enough time with this question, and uh, wipe yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Check yourself before you wreck yourself. We are wipe ready for question before three. You hurt yourself. I am That's so excited accurate. for this question. Stephanie, oh, is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. Do you Whoa. remember what your question is? Something about having the power of invisibility and what yeah. would you do with it? Bring it on. Oh. What's your question? If you could be invisible, what would you do with that power? Can I ask a clarification? Yes. So are we just invisible or can we also walk through stuff while being invisible? I'm assuming with invincibility. Invis- com- invis- invis- in- sorry, sorry. In- invisibility, like- not invincible. No, you could, you could, I guess, die when you stop being invisible. With invisibility, you could kind of walk through walls. That That Ooh. is part of of the situation. But that being said, I retract my further, my previous statement. You could die. Not to say that whatever answer you were going to have was going to kill you. I'm assuming it wouldn't. Because none of my answers were going to kill me. Let's, let's assume, though, because I think it's funnier to assume, if you guys are okay with this, that you could not walk through walls. You were okay. just invisible. You're still there. So you just have to, like, run behind people if they go into weird situations? Yeah. Because all of mine was like, I'm going to just follow you home. Your indention in the couch <laughs> is still horrible. there. Oh, yeah. No. All of mine was literally, I'm just going to follow you home and see what your evening actually looks like. Who are the people that you're going to follow? Yeah, tell There's us There's definitely going to be CEOs, some celebrities, some people that I've idolized that I just want to take down a notch. Okay. So which celebrities, <laughs> which CEOs, current CEOs, okay. I can't name them. Okay. 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 Interesting. I would do that for most CEOs. I, okay. I'm just curious, like, when the show is over, when the lights come down, when the curtains close, what does your life actually look like? That is what's super interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And that's why I would want to be invisible. I'd want to follow you home. I'm in your car. I'm coming home with you. We're in your house. What's happening? Are yeah. you actually, like, some crazy millionaire with this crazy crazy life when you get home or are you just putting on some 90 day fiance like the rest of us and just like <laughs> eating terrible food and farting away like the rest of us i bet it's really lonely i bet it's a lot sadder than you think yeah. and i want to know that to feel better about myself oh <laughs> you should feel great Seb, about yourself I feel, I feel great about myself i just want to feel better knowing that they're feeling worse <laughs> is it that that they feel worse because you don't like them Oh, God, I can't answer this without revealing too much. But so the one I mean, I've alluded to a particular yes. person that I have had some weird nemesis with yes. that isn't somewhat completely legitimized. But in my mind, it is. And it's because it's created this culture of entitlement. Yep. And that is what stems it all. So if I go home and see that this person isn't as entitled as what I think their culture has created, that would be very educational to me. <laughs> what if what if they were, though? Then that just proves my point. So would you? I haunt want them to in- be proven wrong. Would you haunt them in their house with your <laughs> invisibility? No, That's with my, my no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I would, I would not. No, I would not haunt. I would not do anything to let them know I was there. I would just take notes on what I saw. Mm. But what would you do with that information? Oh, I would do a lot with my internal ego and psycho and what my life plan is, knowing that some terrible person who seemingly is a millionaire on the outside but a terrible person on the inside can can do this I see. which means that i can do this being less terrible on the inside and not a millionaire on the your, outside your list of people you want to stalk while you're invisible is like aria's checklist of people she wants to kill <laughs> i don't want to hurt us no i didn't say soul. you want to you I just want, list. I literally just want to be a fly on the wall. Okay. I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm just wanting to gather knowledge so assuming, over people to figure out if they are as shitty as I think they are or so if they are as awesome as I think they are. Let's assume that you can't walk through walls. 
How are you going to get inside there? Well, place? invisible doesn't mean that they can feel me, right? So you just I mean, have to could. run and go right behind them wherever they're going. <laughs> That's if like you saw me, it was a weird shimmy situation <laughs> with your arms fully out. You get into my, tea, what my I have to do. T-pose. When you're invisible, you have to make more space <laughs> for your body. Yes. Claim your space, girl. Claim my space. <laughs> Claim your space. Elbows up. What would you do, Ashley, if you were <sighs> invisible? Hmm. I think... I didn't think about the CEO's part, but there's something sort of like cousin related to that. Mm. I would want to sit in meetings where all these like high powered people are making decisions and then follow while each of them stab each other in the back. (laughs) I think like it would almost be like corporate espionage. Yeah. That'd be really compelling. I think that'd be really interesting. I don't disagree. Um, I think I'd probably also uh, go to some music concerts. For free. (laughs) For free. Yep. Yep. (laughs) I, yeah, oh, oh, I mean, you would obviously do the, like, presidential suites in certain yeah. situations. Yeah. Just for yeah. the fuck of it. Um, what else? I think I'd probably also visit some, rest, like, very, like, Michelin star restaurants and yes! look at their kitchens and see them cooking and maybe try some of their food. No, I would I would go to the tables people are eating at and, like, st- take little pieces of their food and eat it. <laughs> Can you eat that, though, if you're invisible? Can Why not? That, would that be shown, though? Would that Is it, like, a Casper situation? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm curious no, about. No, I feel Is like that fully... you could put your phone in your pocket while invisible and it would disappear. Like, any part of you it's like the Harry. To you. It's like so the whatever, Harry Potter the cloak. cloak. Yeah, okay, it's like the, the cloak, cloak, basically. Okay. I'm I'm imagining more invisibility cloak than being invisible and untouchable and unhearable and that kind of stuff. I feel like I want to still be in the room, just can't be seen. My butt and print on the couch would still be there. Oh, can I name something else? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. I would love to go scuba diving invisible because that means none of the fish could attack me. Like sharks and stuff. The you amount of horror movies sh- you would survive? Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a game changer <laughs> I saying. really just wanted to spy on people I hated and or was obsessed with I didn't even think about the amount of horror movies that I'm also obsessed with that I would have survived yeah you can you imagine if I could go club. swimming with the sharks and they would never know but can sure. they smell you because sharks go by smell if I was alive. profusely bleeding and visit, <laughs> so they, they would get psychologically messed up they'd be like this water smells like blood oh but would they just start biting at it and maybe maybe yeah, but maybe. i maybe could even ride a whale <laughs> no I, mean, would know. I feel like Why you, would you, you want to could be as a human too you'd still need air yeah but that's true <laughs> <laughs> you still need so, oxygen so at I'm, the end of this so i'm just like an invisible human with like air on my back <laughs> Oh my god what's um, that air tank doing on that whale <laughs> unless it gets under my invisibility cloak. yeah there you go god i feel like there's so much that can be done but in all honesty i would i would want to just go home with one of these ceos and just see how lonely their life actually is for some reason that gives me so much gratification see what i would like to do with this with the power of invisibility is i would like to play pranks on people so much i would go home with people Ashley's having so Ashley, many issues. Ashley just laid down. Do you want me to like pull it? Because I'm Ben Gay. Her leg is cramping. Pull, pull. Do you want pull, pull my leg. Pull my leg. <laughs> is that better or worse? It's better. It's better. Oh, it's that <laughs> Get some Ben Gay. Are we, are we okay? better. Okay. okay. Oh my god. I'm sorry, guys. I tried to be quiet, but my leg cramped up so bad. We're <laughs> old. <laughs> Things to hurt for no reason. Oh, Ashley's like rolling happening. around on the floor. That's oh. why my bot mitzvah would be like 25 years later at this point. How about a geriatric bot mitzvah? Eh? That is literally my dream. I want like a 40 to 50 years later when I'm, you know, 73, 83, having my bot mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> Still playing Britney Spears. Be like, I'm yes. truly a woman. Hit me, baby, one more time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just assuming I have emphysema. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just assuming. Well, you know, a lot of old people's homes have a lot of STDs, right? Oh, so I have emphysema too? and chlamydia? Probably. A lot Damn of it. Old a people's t- homes have oh, a... Oh, because they get around. They get around. I want it. Around. That is not 
a, a precursor to what I'm about to say, but I've always wanted to live in an old people's home. Why? I do not want any of those STDs because they all go to bed at like seven and they eat at four. And that's the life I live now. You, you just, just need... want to get your invisibility click and watch them. I mean, kind, not even watch them. I just want to participate. I just want to be Ooh. like, I'm going to come home at like 3.30 and me and my dog are going to go play some bingo and then... Have some soup and go to bed at seven? That sounds like the best life ever. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you just should live in a commune. Probably. But I can't have like a like a serial killer commune. Like we we when you say commune, I immediately go to like Manson and shit. Oh my I did not mean that. I meant <laughs> like a hippie commune where they like grow yeah. their own veggies together. Uh-huh. I know, uh-huh. I know, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. We're on the same page. Hippie communes. Which means Anyways. retirement community. Anything yes, else you guys would do while invisible? Well, did you... I, I, You didn't say too much. So I think what I would like to do, though, I want to go home with people like Stephanie, <laughs> but I want to, like, mess with them a little bit. Like, I love playing a good prank on people, so I would... I'd be the person like opening their cupboards in their kitchen while they look away Ooh, or woof. making making people I don't like. There are very few people in this world that I don't really care for, but I want to make them think that they're that, like gaslighting them, right? So it makes them think that they're being haunted. So it's like haunt lighting them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like this is a precursor, pun intended, to the next episode. Yes. We're getting very Halloween-y up in here. Anyway, Halloween-y. that wraps up our episode number nine. Woohoo! Woohoo! Thank you guys for listening. And as always, please take a chance and go to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review. We'd really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Um, tell your friends about the podcast. Also, just name your price. If for a five-star, you want an awkward guy face. Oh, yeah. I, I will like that. give you an awkward guy face. Like, what's your price? <laughs> <laughs> so I we- am not <laughs> a- above being for sale. <laughs> And on that note, on that we note. wrap up the ninth episode with prostitution. Uh, <laughs> and we will see you guys in episode 10 for the Halloween episode. Keep it classy. Keep it classy. Bye, guys.